The lob play, high, low, Alec Lamb, good, and man one. Turn off the Williams, attacks the goal, lays it up and in. Tominaga, off a screen of mass. Now the rescreen, now the return pass, the drop off, and the dunk! Barry with a dunk. On the right side with the ball is Lawrence. Pull up Jay, three ball, yes, nothing but net. Splash, Tominaga fires and scores. Tominaga, the three ball, and the step back, got it! Tominaga wants to go one-on-one -on -one against Reed, the big, the crossover, the step back, the three by Casey. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Tominaga drives it, kicks it, weak side, extra pass, mass three ball. Got it! Well, those were some fun high V sounds of the game. Huskers take care of the Wolverines by 20. You kind of built that in the first half, and maybe the better thing is you sustained it the whole second half. Well, we built it to 30 in the first True. half, and I didn't like the way we finished. We, you know, they went into a zone and it slowed us down. We had a couple of wide open shots, and we've been shooting the ball very well early in that game. The ball movement was crisp, and you know, and we were making the extra play. It was just a really fun first half of basketball until those final probably four or five minutes. And, uh, you know, woke him up at halftime. You know, we got on him pretty good. We got to go out and push this back. It's a dangerous place to be because if you go out and allow them to go on a run, now it gets down to 10 or 12. You know, now you're, you're, in, a, you're in a fight the rest of the way. So was really pleased to see us. We went out and pushed that thing right back up to 26 and then just kind of held them off the rest of the way. Very good. We got a lot of fun stuff to get to. The Huskers beat the Wolverines last Saturday at a packed PBA. We'll check out the action from the first half. That's coming up next. Welcome back to the Nebraska Basketball Show presented by BMO. Last Saturday, the Huskers entertained the Michigan Wolverines, a sellout crowd at Pinnacle Bank Arena. And you really jumped all over this team early on. They get a bucket here to go, but I thought early, Josiah Alec might have been your hero. Yeah, Josiah, he definitely set the tone for us, and we really challenged him on the offensive glass. And, you know, he, he it was coming off a game against Northwestern where he had zero points and zero rebounds. This was his second offensive rebound on the possession, and just, you know, his he, he just seemed very fresh in this game. And it was great to see him really go out there and set the tone for our team. Uh, most of it was with just hustle and energy plays. And defense here led to offense. You forced 14 turnovers in the game, and you were really active on that end. We were. We had great hands. I, I you know, the percentage that they that they shot, I thought we were really uh, good. You know, Kase coming over has got to be stronger than that um, on, uh, on on that low man. Uh, but overall, you know, we did a good job forcing them into mid-range shots and great job by Jawan coming over the top in that rebound. Uh, but this is really where we took advantage early was getting the ball into the paint and then that opened up the three ball. Rink had the assist on that last possession. Eight assists for Rink in this game. Wasn't a big game offensively point-wise, but he helped you so much with dist distributing the basket. He, he, he has done such a good job, and he has uh, such a good feel, and, and he's really developed the chemistry that Derek had last year with whether it's Kese or CJ, whoever it is. Uh, you know, a little play to get Kese coming off, and this is just one of those nights for Kese, especially in that first half. He just really had it going. Uh, another good job right there in a contested mid-range shot. It's what we want to give up and, uh, you know, weren't taking the ball out of the net. I think we forced them 32 percent in the first half, and that's really what got us out in transition, and that's what got us confident. Yeah, Casey ended up with leading score in this game with 19. He made three threes. That was not a three, but he made three threes in this game. As you've got control here, you're up 11, just seven minutes into the game. Yeah, and you know what you're seeing right there, that we had two great possessions that uh, ended up in shot clock violations. You know you're, you're doing something right when that happens. Again, another good decisive move by Josiah uh, on the baseline. And you know, the thing that I really like with these highlights, you see all the extra passes that we're making. And you know, we talk about the good to great concept, getting the ball in, you know, maybe have a shot, but kicking it out for a wide open three. And from an analytic standpoint, those are the shots that you're trying to create. There's Jamarcus splashing home a three. Sam, yeah, really good hustle here. play here. I, you know, this this was just one of those plays again that got us going. <clears throat> you know, 15 point lead right there, and uh, ball got knocked out of bounds, and then Casey hit this three on the ensuing possession. So just a really good job by Sam going out and getting us an extra possession on the offensive end. Crowd really into it. You've got an 18 point advantage at this point in time. Uh, Six threes in the first half for your team offensively. Yeah, and, and you know, again, another great job right there. Kese coming down. This was after a really good stretch. I think it forced a second time out by Michigan. I just love this possession. Kese driving it down on a go and what we call a go and catch, hitting Juwan on the slash, and then making the extra up top uh, to rink. And, and that's what that, you know, it's really what it's supposed to look like. When we play with that type of thrust and that type of force on offense and make the extra unselfish play, uh, we're a pretty, pretty tough team to defend.
Here you track down a rebound and leads to a little floater from Kese as you continue to build that lead. Look at that score, folks, 38 to 10. Yeah, Kese is just amazing to me, the, the wide array of shots, array of shots that he has. And, you know, he just, uh, at his size, be able to shoot those floaters, uh, you know, contested over the size of the five men. And then this is just good spacing on the switch attack. And, you know, the way Kese had it going, we're, we're, we're certainly okay with that shot. 48% shooting for the Cornhuskers in the first half. You held Michigan to 32%. And a nice little give and go here for Yeah, Jamal. another great play. Just, you know, they're, uh, we're up aggressive on the ball screen. We just call that a pocket roll. And a good job by Rink getting it in there, playing under control. And then Jawan slashing out of the corner. Um, you know, that's an important play when teams are aggressive in the ball screen. Now, we shouldn't even show these next few highlights because this is what you didn't like. Kind of a late <laughs> push by them at the end of the first half. I mean, we had to go. I think we had 43 points with about six minutes left in the half. And, you know, they get two threes to end it, uh, you know, to pull that thing back to 20. Uh, here's the, the last of it. We didn't, you know, give ourselves a chance to get the last shot. We inbounded it with 36. We work on that to try to get the last shot. Uh, but we gave them the uh, two for one. And they hit two threes on that to cut it back to 20. 20 point game at the half, 45 25. There are the numbers as those shooting percentages. Nebraska, three point shooting percentage, 40, nearly 43% in that first half. So that's 20 minutes of the game against the Wolverines. Back with the second half action. We'll do that next. Welcome back to the Nebraska Basketball Show presented by BMO. Nebraska 45, Michigan 25 at the half. Here comes the second half from PBA last Saturday. And you get off to a nice start to kind of build that lead back up. Yeah, we did. And, and it was a very important stretch. We talked a lot about going out and really setting the tone. These first five minutes were so important with the way that Michigan built a little momentum. Good job. Great pump fake there by Josiah. Uh, getting getting their uh, big off the ground and, and getting that three-point play to get us going. And then I think they scored, and then we got it going again on a little run to push that thing right back up to 26. Well, Josiah, 7 of 10 from the field. It's a pretty good effort. Well, it, again, he, he didn't li like how he played. Good extra pass here by Rank. I think he had eight assists on the night. But Josiah, he just he did not like the way he played against um, uh, against Northwestern and, and wanted to bounce back with a big game. And the thing that I was really proud of him, he didn't go out and force the issue and take a bunch of contested shots. He went out and did it on the offensive glass. And, you know, that's what makes him who he is. It's what makes him a special player. And I was really proud of him to see him out there making all those energy plays for our team because our, our guys feed off of him when he's playing like that. A couple of buckets by Burnett. He led them in scoring only Wolverine in double figures with 18 and another basket. Uh, from Josiah here on another feed from Rink. Yeah, t and, and both those were against the zone. Those those last two plays, good job by Rink flashing in there to the middle, and we got the high-low with Josiah on the one and then getting the slash out of the corner. Oscars with 13 minutes to go, still have a lead right around that 20-point barrier in this game. And we're getting to the point where you kind of called a lot of actions for Bryce. Yeah, yeah, he was really good and, you know, obviously an unforced turnover right there. But Bryce did a really good job, especially against the zone, getting into the middle. And he, he just, you know, he's one of our, the better mid-range uh, shooters that we have. So we work on getting him in the middle of that zone where he can knock down that shot against that soft spot. So he hits a three there, and now he'll take a little mid-range jumper here. He's tough. He's a, he's a load to defend. Yeah, you know, we're really playing him a lot at the point right now with the change in lineup, with going with a bigger uh, bigger group, and that has allowed him to play with the ball in his hands. And I think he's done a really nice job with that. He's, he's made good plays. Uh, you know, he still has little stretches where he needs to take better care of the ball. Uh, but overall, for playing a position that he's really never played before, I've been really pleased with him. He ends up with 13 points in the game. Some more coming up here from Bryce. Five and I in shooting. In fact, we're going to hear from him later on in the program. But, you know, you've still got about a 20-point lead, so you've kind of taken the wind out of the sails of Michigan at this point. Yeah, and there's that little play I was talking about. He, he flashed in from the side in our, in our five-out alignment. And, you know, hopefully if we get that thing moving and keep it spaced properly, uh, they're going to run out of men, and, and that's what happened on that play where Bryce hit that little shot. Good pace right here. You know, you still want to play with pace even though you have a lead, uh, but it's got to be smart, and I thought that was a really good take there by Bryce. Bryce, one of four Huskers to finish the game in double figures as we continue action in the second half. Nebraska with a 23-point lead, now 21-point lead here. And, and your guys did not let off the gas in the second half, and that can be easy to do when they look up and they know what the score is. They know you've got a big lead. It, it really is. It's, it's kind of human nature when you, you build up the type of lead that we had with a 30. You hate to see it when it gets down to 20. You give 10 uh, points of those back. 
Uh, but again, I thought our guys did a nice job. I thought her pace was good, her space and great cut right there uh, by Bryce. Rink demands so much attention on that pop with his ability to shoot it, and that's what opens up that slash right there for Bryce. You outscore him in the paint 38 to 18 in this game. That was a, a huge part of this thing. We've got a fun moment coming up here where you get some guys on the bench into the game, and Matar makes a three. Coach, I'm not sure. I, I don't think that's happened all yeah, year. Bank open on a, uh, on, on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. It was, uh, yeah, it's good to see, though. The thing I love, this is a great cut by Sam. Obviously, you know, misses the layup there, but uh, you know, it was a good good action. Yeah, but the thing that I was really pleased with when Matar hit that shot, which I know we'll see here in a second, um, I'm not sure why we're watching Michigan block our shots right now, but you know, Matar did a, uh, you know, when he hit that shot, just to see the bench go absolutely crazy was a lot of fun. Yeah, so the Oscars in control of the game last couple minutes. We're about ready to see some guys come off the bench, and I know you love to be able to put those guys in toward the end of the game. They work so hard for you during practice. They do. Another crazy tough shot right there by uh, uh, by Kese, but this, I think, is the possession. And, you know, the other thing, and I showed this in the film when we did our cleanup the next day, is, you know, the block out that Henry uh, Burt and Jeff Grace did to get Henry uh, the uh, the rebound and that that's a great job uh, right there again uh, just to see the, the bench go crazy and it's good to see Matar he's working really hard he's developing and he's going to be a good player yeah you said he might be the most improved guy on the team yeah he you know again your freshman is what you want to see him you know he and Eli unfortunately Eli's dealing with the ankle sprain he was getting in there pretty much every night uh, but you know he's those high ankle sprains are tricky so but it's it's good to see those freshmen developing Oscar 17th win now seven and seven in league play. We're back with more on the show coming up next. Welcome back to the Husker Basketball Show. This week, our Cornhusker conversation brought to you by teammates. Jessica Cootie sits down with Husker junior forward Bryce Williams. Well, we're about midway through the season here. How have you liked being a Husker? I've loved being a Husker. The energy in the arena is just unmatched. Um, the passion for the game on, for, from every team is just unmatched. And it's just been fun to play a, new, a different brand of basketball and learn so much. What are some of the things you have learned? Um, first of all, I transitioned into a more on-ball type of guard, not so much just a shooter. And then just defending every night, having to bring it every night, having something required of me every night, it, uh, it, it means a lot and it just grows my love for the sport and it just keeps me locked in and just wanting to keep getting better. Your versatility on the court, being able to do so many different things, how has that developed for you? How have you been able to, to be able to bring that to a team? Um, see, coming into college, I always thought like all I was was a score, but now I'm learning that I can do other things like pass, defend. Um, every night, every night, it may not be my night to score. Every night, it might not be my night to shoot that well. But everything I can do is bring energy, play hard, play defense, re and rebound. So I'm happy with that. Your free throw shooting is uh, obviously a, a big plus for this team when you get to the line, it's almost a guaranteed make. Why has that become so important to you to be able to, to know that when you're, getting a, when you're getting that opportunity, you're gonna make the most of it? Um, free throws are free, so you gotta make them. My dad would always say that. <laughs> that, is, that is one thing he would always say. And then I always wanna try to be like 50, 40, 90. That's what my coach, uh, my last coach, Coach Sanchez would always tell me, so. It's been a big deal. I've gotten up a lot of free throws, and that's what I do to kind of get my rhythm going. You talked with a, a few of the assistant coaches, and they certainly have mentioned your dad, and there's a great deal of respect for what your dad did at Charlotte, too. Um, how big of a role has he played, and did he play in the basketball player you became? Actually, my dad never really pushed me to play basketball. He was really only around when I played basketball, like ninth and 10th grade, and then junior he passed away. But. Really, all, all he wanted me, all he instilled in me was just try, try to be confident, just be confident in yourself. We always had like dreams together. I would tell him my dreams about basketball and everything, and he would say like, "You can do all that." And he would tell me that he has confidence in me and that he, he believes in me. But I guess I kind of get my scoring ability from him, my shooting from him. But he's never really been. We've never really been in the gym, or we've never really like watched film that much. Yeah, so it's kind of more natural than it is like something he he instilled in me. What do you think he'd say about what you've been able to do here at Nebraska? Um, he'd be proud of me. He would definitely tell me to be more aggressive, but he would be, he would be proud of me just because I'm so versatile. Um, and now that I'm on the ball, it shows that I can make decisions and I can be trusted with the ball when the game's on the line. But yeah, he would just be proud of me. Um, I mean, I'm competing every night. I mean, it's, it's nothing more that you can ask for. What does it mean to you to have, um, you know, someone like that, your dad, that a lot of people remembers his game or have such respect for him, what he did for the game of basketball, and, and 
um, that they can bring that up with you, talk with you about that? Um, it means a lot. It means a lot because my dad created a good name for me and through his reputation, I have a good reputation. Good work there from Jessica talking to Bryce. And this has been a guy that uh, we mentioned during the highlights. I mean, hard to defend. This is a good find for you to add to the program. Yeah, he, you know, the thing we really liked about Bryce when we were going through the process and looking at the transfer portal is who fits how we play and his versatility on both ends of the floor. Not only is he playing the point, he's guarding the point. And he has really done a good job. Bowie was, you know, kind of a perfect example of what he can do with his size to slow down a, uh, a point guard. But as, you know, he's continued to learn the system, I've been really pleased with Bryce, uh, the way that he's gone out there and run the show. He's putting up good numbers uh, right now all across the board and has made a lot of big plays for us to help us win some big games. And hopefully a lot more to come from Bryce. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts from the head coach coming up next. We're back here on the Husker Basketball Show presented by BMO Nebraska. We'll have a midweek game this week after having last week's midweek off at Indiana, one of the great arenas in college basketball. And it's time for your team, I think, to go out and do something on the road. Yeah, it, obviously very important this last, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this last stretch for us to get three opportunities to get our first uh, conference road win. In Indiana, they, uh, they pose a lot of problems with their size, with uh, Ware and Renault. At, uh, at the four or five, and Mbako, who's about six eight at the three spot. So good size, uh, tough place to win, but um, you know, I like how we're playing right now, Greg. So we just gotta keep out uh, doing the little things that, uh, that have helped our team uh, perform at a high level and close this thing out the right way. Then Minnesota back home next week, and we owe them after playing them way back in December early in conference play. That'll do it for this week's show. My thanks to the entire Husker Vision crew and to you for watching. We invite you to join us again here next week for an inside look at Oscar basketball.